have uh, Coach Kelly on, Notre Dame head coach, who joins us now. Unless you have that answer, uh, Coach. Uh, yeah, Daryl Dawkins loved the chocolate thunder. I, 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 I don't have the rest of that, though, unfortunately. <laughs> Who was your favorite athlete growing up? Um, you know, growing up in Boston, obviously, I had so many of them. Uh, Bobby Orr, um, you know, was, was probably one of my idols. But, you know, Larry Bird, you know, and, and what he was able to do as, as, a, as a great teammate and making others around him, I think those two stand out the most to me. Do you care about Deflate Gate? No, not really. I know that the football and, and and having a little less poundage in it doesn't really impact the game. I understand the implications of being, you know, was it more the cover up than the the actual balls? But um, uh, it just seems to be um, digging in of the heels here more than it does about the issue itself. Is it an issue in college football? No, not at all. No, it, the game is not decided by that at all. And, um, you know, I think that there's less, you know, there's less oversight, really, it, even in college football. I know it has zero impact on, uh, and, and there are no, you know, obviously, uh, even in the NFL, there are kicking balls. There are not even kicking balls in, in, in college football. So, um, you know, and, and it really doesn't impact what we do. But are you allowed to have your own footballs to your liking? Your, you know, can can Zaire have the, with that football be his football? Oh, certainly. We we're able to work those balls out. Now they have to be approved by the officials prior to the game. But um, yeah, we're we each team has their own balls. Their their sideline uh, people um, will have their balls marked and. Um, you know, some use Spalding, some use Rydell, some use um, Wilson, you know, so wow. whatever Nike, whatever whatever the ball it is, you know, each team has a different feel for the football that they like. Introduce us to your uh, your new quarterback. Uh, Malik, um, you know, is, is a young man that uh, plays with a great deal of passion and emotion. Um, it has great leadership qualities uh, and and um, has the ability to uh, impact our football team both as a thrower and a runner of the football. So, you know, in terms of, you know, what you're trying to accomplish offensively, um, he gives you, you know, he gives you that ability to, to both run it and throw it with him. And, and in college football today, that that's an important piece. Why is it you can run that offense in college, but you couldn't run that offense in the pros? Well, I think you can in certain instances. Uh, you know, I think there there are definitely pieces of it that um, uh, are run in in the NFL today. I don't think it can be um, exclusive uh, in terms of zone read option. But there's no question that it's like anything else. I, I don't think you can be exclusive in anything, but you can certainly spread the field. I think you have to be when you go to the NFL, you have to be prepared to take what the defense gives you. You can't dictate and say, I'm going to be this. Um, so you have to be equally as good at running it as you are throwing it. Uh, and, and some college football teams uh, don't. They, they, they just decide, Georgia Tech decides that we're going to run the football, and that's what we're going to do. You can't do that in the NFL. You have to be equally as good at running it and throwing it. Do you watch the NFL? Sure. I mean, it's backdrop for me. Sunday, we're in here breaking down film and, you know, preparing for, you know, the next opponent. So the TV's on. Um, I don't get a chance to really focus in too much. I get a chance to watch you a little bit on on the uh, the evening edition of football when I get home, but that's about it. We're talking to Brian Kelly. No you do a good job, too, by the way. Well, thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank no problem. You. Thank you. And you're a tough guy to please. If I made a mistake, well, though, Notre Dame, well, there's a lot of it's, it's, it's hard to please everybody. So you know that's that's a standard that you have to have when you take the job. Would you yell at me if uh, you were my producer, my boss, and I made a mistake on Football Night in America? Only if it was a mistake that you shouldn't make. You know, if if it was one that I didn't prepare you the right way, mm. then then I'd be mad at myself. Uh, this whole cost of attendance, does Notre Dame use uh, this where the... the uh... We certainly do, uh, but our cost of attendance is, 
very, very high, so there's not a lot of room there uh, within our budget to go much higher. So, you know, we're approximately, I think, 1800 to $1,900 relative to um, uh, the cost of attendance over uh, what, what the kids would get for a full scholarship. Where does this head to, Coach? What, what, does this lead I, I to something bigger? No, I don't think so. Um, I think it, it gives them truly what, the cost of attending it is relative to transportation costs. I mean, it's really about transportation costs. Um, but it's still about college kids. I mean, I'm looking at our budget right now, Dan, and probably 30% of our kids don't even have the money that, that, that was allocated to them because they didn't bring back library books. They've got parking tickets. Um, they didn't turn in their keys. Uh, they got all kinds of charges on their student accounts. So, you know, that $900 that they were going to get, is like 150 right now. Uh, so typical college, you know, um, you didn't pay your bills and, and uh, that stipend check now is $150. So I, I don't think it's going any further than uh, cost of attendance. And I think that that's where it should be. You uh, keeping an eye on Virginia Tech. They had uh, a, f- a list of fines for these players. I, I saw that. I did. Um it's not something in my 26 years that, that I felt um, was something that I would do. Um, I'm sure that, you know, Coach Beamer's been, I have a ton of respect for Coach Beamer. He's been in the business more than longer than anybody, and uh, I would never question anything he does. I just know that for me, um, you know, it's it's so hard on these kids financially, and you know, especially my guys here at, at Notre Dame, they do not have that kind of money. So um, we try behavior modification. <laughs> we work hard on that end of it. And uh, wait, wait, what, what's behavior modification? Oh, well, is it called behavior discipline? Behavior modification would be um, getting up early for study table on Sunday. Uh-huh. Um, and and we think that, that if, if you have to get up early um, at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning after Saturday, that, um, you know, then, then you will start to make sure that uh, uh, you don't skip class. You have a season with Notre Dame, sort of like the college hard knocks. Are you ready for cameras to be following you? I have a boom mic right over my head right now. Are you being filmed right now? I am. Well, do something for TV. This is like the Kardashians. Yell at me. <laughs> all right? You got to make good TV, I feel like coach. This is the reality show. I, I was trying to ask my my SID, Mike Birch. Is it is is this what what is it? Big big brother feels like because I went to the bathroom and I had to unplug my <laughs> wire. <laughs> and I, I, I know the like, feeling. I that know the is uncomfortable. Well, Extremely I guarantee you this, Coach. They're going. They're going to be people that are going to be listening to you take a bathroom break because you'll forget to turn off your microphone. I'm. I'm. I'm not. Not totally comfortable with that. Now, in the in the uh, breakout room, so my offensive defensive staff rooms, we have cameras, mounted cameras, but they've put a plug where I can, you know, pull the plug on that. So I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable with pulling a plug. How often have you pulled the plug already? Not yet, not yet. But I'm sure there's going to be a time and place for that. And that's for certain. Would you say, hey Dan, that's an unbelievably great question? Just just for this, Dan. Show. The times that that I'm on this show, the kind of questions that I get from you, mm. um, far su- superior than any other show that I do. Could you name some of the other shows and hosts I'm better than, Coach? That would be good content too. Well, I would I would start with Larry King. Oh, um, I'm better than Larry King. All right. Well, I got to start somewhere. I, I appreciate that. Uh, is there? Give me a reason why you would want to be in a conference. Is there a reason that you particularly would say, I would like for Notre Dame to be in a conference because of what? Um, I would say probably um, conference championship. You know, you know, at Notre Dame, you know, you only play for one thing, and that's to get into the playoffs. So, you know, take Ohio State's situation last year where they stumbled early um, against Virginia Tech. Urban was able to come back in the next day and say, listen, yeah, we stumbled. But remember, you know, we're here to win the Big Ten championship. Um, we don't have that luxury. You know, we, we have to we have to talk about 
playoffs and, and getting to the playoffs. So um, obviously that would be a great advantage in terms of being in a conference. Um, but, you know, the, the positives for us obviously are the ability to play some incredible teams throughout the country. And so there, there's, the, there's the pluses and minuses for us. Do you, you know, we, have you seen that show uh, Hoarders where, where, you know, people who just collect everything? I've heard of it, but no, it's, I, I don't get a ton of TV time. Okay. Urban Meyer is a quarterback hoarder. <laughs> well, that's one way to put it, or he's an outstanding <laughs> recruiter and, and great judge of talent. And uh, he's, got, he's, he's very, uh, very fortunate that he's, he's got the ability to move Braxton Miller to wide receiver. That's, uh, that, that's a luxury. Uh, Notre Dame will make the Final Four if? We stay healthy. I'll give me a juicier answer than that. Well, I mean, it, look, it still comes down to quarterback play, the ability to, you know, Malik Zaire to continue to get better and, and lead our offense offensively because it's still centered around quarterback play. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if we do that, if we can stay healthy on defense, I think those are the two things that derailed us last year. Yeah. You know, we we couldn't take care of the football. Um you know, and and uh, our play at that at that position d- did not get better at the end of the year. And defensively, we were we lost key players. So quarterback play and injuries. If if those two things come together, I think we'll be we got a great chance of being in the playoffs. All right. So for this reality show, when we're done, could you hang up angrily? <laughs> Slam the phone down. Yes. Yes. No, I can't do that because you can't. It's, no, not for you, because no, it this, scene is, all he does is get mad. And I got mad on the sideline one time, and I'm still trying to live that down six years ago. Yeah, I know. I called you out for that, too. My God, that was six years ago. Was it? That was your yeah. first year there? Yeah, my you first haven't year. Been, you haven't been mad on the sideline since then? Not to the level that I get accused <laughs> of. My gosh. Okay, but did you hear from your family when, when you got home of how mad you were? Oh, yeah, my daughter. Primarily is my daughter. She goes, What'd you say? You never get mad like that. <laughs> uh, Coach, good to talk to you. We'll catch up with you. And uh, just remember, turn off your microphone every time you go to the bathroom. I know. Thanks, Dan. Good right. talking to Thank you. Thank you, Coach. That's uh, right, Brian Kelly, Notre Dame head coach.